My name is Ed McGee. I'm a cardiac surgeon uh, here at the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute of Northwestern Memorial Hospital, and I'm the surgical director of our Center for Heart Failure, uh, which includes heart transplantation uh, and mechanical assistance. Hi everybody, it's Adam, and I'm here with Dr. Ed McGee of Northwestern Memorial Hospital. And Dr. McGee, can you tell us what type of cardiac surgery you specialize in? Well, well thanks Adam, it's a pleasure talking uh, with you today. I'm an adult cardiac surgeon here at uh, Northwestern Memorial Hospital, uh, and I specialize in surgical therapies for patients uh, with heart failure. Dr. McGee, can you tell everybody what attracted you to that specialty? I always liked to fix things when I was a kid, and cardiac surgery, I think, is the purest expression of that. Uh, if someone has a very sick heart, uh, you can do a surgery, make it more efficient, and typically they get better. This is a question very common among patients. What is heart failure? Heart failure is a, a grouping of different symptoms that typically include uh, having trouble breathing, breathlessness, lack of energy, fatigue, weight gain, uh, having extra water weight. Mm -hmm. And that's all secondary to having, uh, to having an inefficient heart, a heart that's not working as it should, gradually robs patients of quality and length of life, and uh, is ultimately fatal if not managed appropriately. What is the connection between heart failure and valve disease? Heart failure and valve disease are very interrelated. Uh, some types of heart failure are caused purely by having valves that don't work as they should, and we call that valvular cardiomyopathy. So some people have, uh, for example, an aortic valve that's too tight or that, that leaks, uh, and left untreated, that will eventually cause the heart to fail. Is being diagnosed with valve disease a direct precursor to heart failure? It certainly can be, uh, and that's a very important thing to sort out. If it's left untreated, it typically will lead to progressive heart failure, uh, which ultimately can be fatal. The upside of that is if we fix the valve or replace the valve, then the patient gets a new lease on life and, and they have a very efficient heart uh, at, that can last them a long time. What happens to the cardiac muscle as valve disease progresses? The muscle uh, endures needless stress. Typically, the heart gets either stretched out or it, the muscle gets too bulked up and too stiff, and so it can outgrow its blood supply, and that uh, leads to an inefficient heart. It's kind of like the transmission of your car. If the fuel injectors are gummed up, the, the engine doesn't run as efficiently as it, as it should, and ultimately the engine will fail. It's, it's very important to have a, an, an inefficient valve, a valve that's not working as it should be addressed. Dr. McGee, is there any timeline in which heart failure can set in after a valve disorder is diagnosed? The, the problem with a lot of this is it takes a long time. These valve problems develop over a number of years and they're very subtle changes uh, that the patient experiences uh, in terms of symptoms and typically they're not even really aware of the development of symptoms in terms of having trouble breathing or loss of energy. They just downregulate their life. Subconsciously they don't do as much as they used to. Is it possible to slow, stop, or even reverse heart failure? With the proper combination of, of medical therapy uh, and uh, surgery, uh, heart failure can certainly be slowed and in some cases reversed. Everybody's different and everybody's heart's a little different and definitely a condition that can be managed and often can be made better. Uh, and, and that's one of the gratifying things of surgical therapy for valve problems is if, if the valve is made efficient once again, a lot of times the heart follows.